Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So hit subscribe if you'd like to join the fun and paint along. Hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Okay, so this week we are painting something that is very near and dear to my heart, which is coffee. And I had this idea to do a little painting sort of like for my little coffee prep area in my kitchen with a saying that I say at least once a day uh, before I do most things, which is, but first, coffee. <laughs> I know it's a little bit cliche and kind of dorky, but that's what I like about it. I think it's gonna be really fun and really easy, and I'm gonna take everyone through it step by step as per usual. So I have my three standard brushes for today's class. So I have my uh, large square one inch wash brush. I have a medium sized pointed sable brush here and then a brand new uh, small detail brush that's kind of in between uh, the sizes that I've been using. So I have a slightly bigger one and a slightly smaller one and I kind of goldilocks this one. This one is just right. Uh, and I have my canvas here and then also my water cup and everything off the side of the screen. If you'd like to see a complete materials list with everything that you need to paint along, go ahead and check the description box below. It'll take you to my website and bring you to a page that breaks it down, shows you everything that you need. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in today with the background. We're going to do a little uh, background with a sort of table and wall, and then we're gonna let it dry and come back and add our cup of coffee and our words. So let's go ahead and start with our biggest brush. The colors that I have to start with my background are my primary colors and white. So red, yellow, blue, and white. And what I'm gonna do is an orange table and then a purple background here. So I'm gonna start with purple up here with my red. I'm gonna add just a little bit of blue into my red and also some white, and that should get us a nice purple hue, like so. I'm gonna go kind of more on the lighter side today with a little bit of extra white in there. And of course, a little bit of water always helps the paint go nice and smooth. And now something that's kind of easy for me to do is to do the horizon line, kind of first to create a sense of place for ourselves within the painting. And then now we can go from that horizon line up to the very top part of the canvas and fill it in with that purple. But I want to do kind of a fun texture. So let's just make sure that that's as straight as I can make it. It looks pretty good. Okay, and then coming up from that line, we're going to add a little bit more of a textured type of brush stroke. And I want to bring that brush stroke all the way down to touch that line that I just created for myself. Okay, that's looking good. Keeping the brush moving. Very pretty color there. Just creating some nice texture. And yeah, just bringing that all the way down to the horizon line. If you're having a hard time blending purple, uh, it could be the quality of paints that you're using. It's very important. Uh, just keep in mind that you can just buy purple right out of the bottle. And I also have a course on color theory that breaks down how to use the color wheel and how to blend all of the different colors. That is available on Udemy and Skillshare. And there is a link to that in the description box below as well. Okay, a little bit of white in there. I'm going for like a really pretty like purple wall. And then my imaginary little colorful house here. And you can make any color background that you would like. And you could really do any kind of brush stroke texture that you would like as well. The key is just to have it all consistent, kind of thinking like a wall treatment here, yeah? Like a antique effect. All right, and just making sure that the paint kind of soaks into the canvas texture. And I am allowing there to be areas that are considerably lighter. So we don't want it all just one bar boring solid color. We want to kind of have areas of light and dark. Lovely. Okay, that looks great. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush. And I'm gonna mix up the color for my table. 
And in my little imaginary world today, things are very colorful. So I'm gonna have an orange table. I think we'll go nicely with my purple wall. I'm going to take yellow and a little bit of red and blend those together to get a really pretty vibrant orange. So nice. And with that orange, I've got the same brush, I just washed it. I'm going to bring that line up to meet the purple and have a nice line of separation there. Perfect. Wanting to have all of our white in our canvas filled in during this background step first layer. Okay, going across as straight as we can. Okay, now to create a little bit of depth, I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow and just bring that right underneath the orange without even washing my brush because I wanna have a little bit of orange in there and I wanna have a little bit of streakiness. So this is technically a gradation. We're going from orange to a yellow orange. But we're not going to try to make it perfect. We're gonna allow it to be streaky. This is a very fun and it's kind of stylized painting with the bright colors and the high contrast with the black and white. And it's really just about the sum of its parts. It's not about any one step. So don't worry about getting it too well blended today. I'm gonna to take a little bit of white, mix it in with some yellow. And I'm just gonna add a few little brush strokes of a nice light yellow too, to kind of break up my gradation there. There we go. Okay, I think that looks really good. Let's go ahead and let this layer dry, and then we're gonna come back and add a whole bunch more. So I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry background here and fresh colors on my palette paper. I have a nice dark ultramarine blue, a burnt sienna type brown, and then black and white. I rinsed my brushes and got fresh water at break. Let's go ahead now and grab our smallest brush. And we are going to sort of trace out the shape of our cup. And now this is completely customizable. So you can kind of paint whatever kind of cup that you prefer. But I'm gonna do a sort of long and skinny one. And I'm going to start by creating an oval. That's going to be the top part of my cup. So about like so. And then from either side here, my oval, I'm going to do straight lines that come down a little bit at a diagonal, like so. This is a big cup. Very nice. Bring it up pretty much all the way down here. Kind of an exaggerated big cup size. And then you're just going to do a curved line here at the bottom as well. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. And now from one side here, I'm going to have a really cute handle that's going to kind of come up, out, and then curl around. Very cute little curly cue, very important to the overall look of the painting, in my opinion. And now I'm going to block out where I'm going to do some stripes. And I'm going to come back and alternate colors with black and white. But you could actually also make a completely customized cup. You could sort of mimic the type of cup that you drink your coffee from in the morning, something that might be significant to you or sort of match you know, the aesthetic or vibe of your kitchen or house. Or you can just go crazy as well and see what happens. Polka dots, daisies, you could do a little message, got lots of ideas. Okay, so now that I have the stripes blocked out, it's looking cool, go ahead and grab the medium sized brush here. We're gonna do a little bit of filling in. So I'm gonna start just also still with white and I'm actually gonna go one row up to start 
filling in. Now this is a very meditative step. A little bit repetitive here. And we're just gonna relax into it and not rush ourselves. I think it would be really cute to maybe do like a teal and white stripe one as well. It's going to bring some teal in because it's one of my favorite colors. But I really liked the sort of contrast of the purple and orange. Those are definitely some of my favorite colors. Okay, and you can definitely use a smaller brush if that gives you a little bit more confidence and control while you're filling in your stripes. So you do want the brush strokes to be smooth. Fill in each of these little sections as cleanly as you can. And just covering up those sketch lines and being mindful that we're kind of ending along that straight line here. One more white stripe here. That looks good. That way I have black here at the top and bottom, but however many stripes you end up with is just fine. No worries there. And I think my handle, I'll go ahead and have that be white as well. And I want to have a white sort of like lip of the mug here along the top. Also kind of coming around the back edge too. And then I'm going to come around here to my handle and just sort of thicken up that line like so. Coming down and around. Again, feel free to use your smaller brush. I think I will now just for that little curly cue down there. Nice new brush, always a luxury. Okay, nice. So cute. All right, now I'm gonna rinse that medium sized brush. I'm going to fill in my black stripes now. Just with black by itself. And I'm covering those sketch lines as well. You can also fill your whole cup in white and come back with your stripes. But I find that sort of blocking out the shapes and then coming and filling it in just saves a little bit of time. And I'll think I, I think I'll come back later and sort of refine things a little bit with my smaller brush. So I'm just going to be using this medium sized brush to sort of get the bulk of the filling in done. This brush almost needs replacing as well. Been using them for quite a few tutorials now and painting on my own. This is the 71st video <laughs> that I've posted, which is quite a lot. I've certainly got a lot of paintings now. It's been fun. It's been a little over a year. I do one each week, so 52 weeks in a year, so almost not quite a year and a half. If you are painting along with me today, I have a Facebook group that I created for my students and it's designed so that you can share your art with everyone that's painting along and you can share your art, whether it be from painting along with me with the tutorial videos or just from your own creativity. We would love to see your art 
that is just free to join. It's just a Facebook group. Just gotta have Facebook and there's a link in the description box below for that as well. My website also is my name, Sky Pratt, S-K-Y-E-P-R-A-T-T dot -T com. That's a good place to, to find all of the different links of the things that I've mentioned. And you can also join my email newsletter if you'd like as well and stay up to date on everything. Okay, look at that, so cute. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna use my smallest brush and I'm going to use this gorgeous little coffee brown color with a little bit of white. And again, this can be totally customizable, like how much cream do you like in your coffee? And I'm just gonna fill in this little gap right here as if we have filled our cup to the top with fresh, hot morning coffee. Delicious. I usually have to have two cups in the morning. <laughs> and then sometimes in the afternoon as well, a good iced coffee. That would make a really cute painting as well. Okay, looks good. Now I'm going to use that same brush to come back into my sort of stripey sections. And I'm going to sort of finesse things and then also outline the outside of the cup. And we're going to start to kind of outline everything so the handle is going to have a black outline, like so. All the way around. And around both sides here, so swooping around. Coming back through. You can kind of come back and clean this up if you need to. Feel free always to sort of hop around wherever your painting might need it. You don't want to get too caught up in each step without sort of seeing the big picture. Okay, just trying to come back and Refine that a little bit here. So you do want pretty smooth black outlines. And you could even do steps like this with a paint pen. Sometimes holding a brush takes some getting used to. Whereas holding a pen might feel a little bit more natural. Those are a fun thing to try as well. Fun to have a few options in your painting arsenal. All right, let's see. That's looking pretty good. It's not perfect, but that's okay. All right, and then I'm just gonna come around here and just outlining the whole cup here. Making everything look nice and refined and clean and finished. Okay, and we're also going to have a black line right where our table meets our background there, the wall. Right across like so. Looking pretty cute. Okay. Almost finished here with our little cup. Just going to go along the top part here. Like so. And we'll go ahead and outline our little coffee area too. 
lots of black outlining today. It's one of those kind of paintings, very illustrative, not going for photorealism. Going just for a fun little kitchen painting. So cute. Okay, I think I'm just going to come back here with a little bit of white real quick and just clean up a few little areas that I see. Try not to pull my black into my white too much. There we go. That looks a little bit better. And right in here was bothering me as well. Okay. Super cute. And now from the top part here of my coffee, I'm going to grab a little bit of white. I'm going to do some swirls. And I'm going to go right from the center here and up and around like so. And then I'm going to have another swirl start to kind of come off the canvas like that. And I did sort of pull through some colors there. We don't really want it to be gray as much as we want it to be black and white. So I may need to kind of let that area dry for a minute. So those are sort of the basic shapes. And I'll do a few more along the side like so. Very cute. And then I'm gonna create my words. I'll come back and sort of finesse that area in just a moment, but let me grab a little bit of blue and black together. Just using freehand here with my small brush still. And I want to have the word first right here. I'm going to have the word coffee here down below. I'm going to have the word but up here. So I'm going to actually start with the kind of middle word, which will be first. So F. I, just kind of doing lowercase, just normal letters here, kind of trying to be mindful about making them the same height. But first, let's do the T about as high as the F. But first, comma, like so. I'm going to keep this word somewhat thin, kind of have a different balance of painting fonts. I'm going to straighten this T up a little bit. Okay, but first, okay, and I'm going to do the word but above it. I'm going to kind of bring it a little bit further over, and I'm going to have a little bit more of a bold font for this word. I'm going to make these letters all the same height. So this is sort of like an uppercase type font. Nice. Looking cute. I'm almost finished. All right. Taking a little bit more of that dark blue back in. For somewhat thick letters. And you can have any color words you like here as well. I just thought the, the dark blue looked nice. Okay. That looks good. Just kind of straightening things out and thickening them up. But first, <laughs> and now for the largest word. I'm going to start kind of over here with a C. 
And we're going to spell out the word here in cursive. Two Fs that kind of look like each other. And two E's now. Like so. Cute. Okay, and I'm going to go back over that one more time. Also, and just kind of thicken things up and clean them up as need be. Very nice. Okay, and just a few more little final steps here. We're on the home stretch. I'm just going to thicken up my C a little bit extra. But first, coffee. Yes. So cute. Okay, so now just jumping back over into the steam rising from my coffee. Just going to grab my white again and just come right back over that now that it's drier and just make it all solid white. Still a tiny bit wet. Just a little bit though. Okay. Like so. And then from the top part here, coming off the canvas, I'm going to grab a little bit of black as well. And you can kind of either choose the inside or outside. Both works. And we're just going to add a little shadow alongside the rising steam as well as the white. And that just gives it a little bit more visibility. Looking pretty cute. Okay, and then just trying to bring that swoop into the spiral as well. That's cute. Okay, I do hope you enjoyed today's painting tutorial. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments section below. I'd love to see you over in the art club. And that is all I have for everybody today. So until next time.